The chain lad endures the whiplash, but as soon as the old man dies before his eyes, his patience runs out raising his eyes to the sky. He asks the gods for help, and the gods answer him. Tearing off the shackles along with the blocks of stone, the strongman gets rid of the guards, weighting the stones as if they did not weigh anything. In doing so, he gives the people hope of salvation in the belief that he is a demigod. 20 years earlier, Amphitryon conquers Argos, destroying its king and leaving many victims. Tired of her husband's cruelty, Alfling first tries to persuade him to stop, but when that fails, she heads to the temple under cover of night. Kneeling down, Alfling leaves gifts and begs Hera to stop her cruel husband by stopping the wars. The goddess does not keep her waiting and, appearing to the queen, she agrees to help her in a strange way by lending her husband Zeus, by whom Alcmene is to bear another son. That same night, Zeus appears in bed with Alcmene to love her and give her the one who will save the world. But the queen's mood is spoiled by her husband having noticed how Alcmene wriggles with happiness. Amphitryon rises all the guards to find the traitor. After a time, a boy is born. Amphitryon allows him to live, but he orders that the boy be named Alcide and declares that he will never be equal to his brother Ephicles. Alcmene hesitates to argue with her husband, but in a whisper she tells her son that to her he will always be Hercules, as his father's wife, Hera, bequeathed him. Twenty years later, Hercules has grown into a strong, brave, and handsome man, whose heart was won at first sight by the beautiful he. One day, on a secret stroll, the girl gave her beloved her talisman, as if foreshadowing an imminent parting. At the same moment, Iphicles interrupted their conversation. Informing Heed that her father was looking for her, Iphicles hinted to his brother that he would have nothing to do with the daughter of the Cretan king, but Heracles did not quarrel with his brother and invited him instead to walk through the woods. As soon as dusk fell, the brothers heard a frightening sound not far, away the terrible, roaring of a Nemean lion. While Ephicles made a hysterical farewell to life, Heracles defeated the predator with his bare hands, but his skin was brought to the palace by his elder brother, declaring that Alcide had cowardly fled from the battlefield. No one believes Ephicles' legend, and to prove his importance, he asks his father to voice the decision that Heap has been granted him and they will soon marry. On hearing this, the girl runs from the hall, and Hercules hurries after her. Amphitryon at this time scolds his firstborn son for his weakness and cowardice. Heap and Heracles plan to flee Amphitryon's territory, but an army is sent in pursuit. The young men are forced to separate, and the girl falls into the water, but Heracles saves her, thus surrendering himself to his brother. As punishment, Amphitryon orders Alcide to go to war, hoping that there the sinful son will fall, while Ephicles, once again defeated, wishes his brother to stay longer in Egypt. Alcmene tries to force her son to retreat, but he is prepared to give his life for his beloved, and then the queen has to tell him the truth about his real father and his real name. Leaving, Hercules asks Heb not to give up in just three moons he promises to return for her. The eunuch departs for Egypt under the command of Sotiris, who tells Hercules that the king has given them half as many men as usual. The legionnaires set up camp in a cave and leaving the sentinels, Sotiris and Hercules go to look around, but when they return the bodies of their fallen comrades are waiting for them. Sotiris tries to lead the army away, but they are surrounded on all sides and the commander has no choice but to declare a battle formation. The hard battle ends predictably Sotiris' detachment is defeated and only a few men remain alive. The Egyptians find the helmet of the king's son, Alcide, on the ground, and the general demands that Sotiris reveal which of the lads is the hare, but Sotiris says that he is among those whose bodies lie on the ground. That Alcide is alive and unharmed beside him in the hands of the soldiers, the commander is silent. The royal family is informed of Alcide's death. This makes Alcmene and he grieve, but brings much joy to Amphitryon and Iphicles. Meanwhile, Hercules and Sotiris are branded as slaves, preparing them for resale. Sotiris does not understand why his friend chose this fate over death, but Hercules promises him that they will soon rejoice at his wedding to Heat. The slaves end up on a ship and head for unknown shores, while Alcmene continues to mourn her son. Reminded of his death is the eldest heir, Iphicles, who is soon to marry the girl who is shedding tears for his brother. Once in prison, Hercules thinks of Hebe, who still does not know that her beloved is alive. Slaves are bought for dirty fights, and Hercules learns that the only way out of there is by becoming a loser. But even that doesn't make the boy lose faith, he asks Soteris to be patient and promises him that they will return. Hercules fights his first battle like a winner he does not spare his opponent, impressing the audience with his strength. Alcmene makes a date with her husband at the statue of Hera, where she decides to tell him the truth about the birth of Hercules. Raising the knife, she tells Amphitryon that it was because of him that the son of all the gods died, and she curses him for it. But the distraught king seizes his weapon and gets rid of his unfaithful wife, ordering the elder Chiron to tell everyone that the queen has taken her own life. 
Hercules and Soteris are respected by their host, and they keep telling him that there are the most magnificent fights in Greece, on which he could make a fortune. Finally, the old man decides to listen, but first he is going to test the strength of the warriors in Sicily by pitting them against the most dangerous opponent. The battle turns out to be very fierce. Four opponents enter the arena at once, using their best weapons. So Tyrus is wounded, but Hercules manages to save him and single-handedly deal with his two strongest opponents. The old slave owner cancels his promise, believing that the wounded Soteris will do no better in the arena, but Heracles refuses to fight unless his master takes them to Greece. He is even willing to give his life for it, though it is clear to him that no one would profit the slave master in such a case. The master surrenders, and the ship carries Heracles home to Greece. Soteris catches up with the elder Chiron, and informs him that Hercules will fight in the arena today. Hercules enters the ring against six opponents at once. No one believes the lad will win, and only Soteris continues to support his friend by raising a new army for him. In the arena, Hercules shows an amazing spectacle. He single-handedly destroys his opponents, making himself a great winner in a few minutes. He puts the talisman of heed back around his neck, believing that now they can be together. Chiron comes to visit the gladiator, and he promises the boy a meeting with Hebe. The elder tells Hercules that his mother is gone, and that Amphitryon and Iphicles are ravaging the city, keeping the people in fear. So Tyrus promises his friend that they will have their revenge. His army now belongs to Hercules, and they will all follow him to free the country. As they enter the village, Hercules sees what Chiron was talking about five of the king's guards taunting the old man, taking everything he has. Licking the life of one warrior, Hercules sends the others to the king to let him know of his son's return and that his evil has come to an end. Upon learning of this, Amphitryon summons allies from Egypt to help. He plans to destroy Hercules, his friend and Zeus himself, so that no one else will dare stand in his way. So Tyrus finds an abandoned house in which Hera herself lives. The goddess warns the boy that he is destined to do great things, but they will lead him far away from love, and he will have to live with it. Hera asks Heracles to accept his father and discover the power of the demigod within him, but Heracles thinks Zeus has abandoned him, but he has never once extended his hand or protected him when he needed it. At night, Iphicles comes to Hebe's bedroom and warns her that their marriage will be consummated no matter what. The fact that the girl does not want this does not worry the tyrant, and in return, he can only offer her death. The girl is ready to accept this, and climbing the tower, she is going to end her torment. Her father manages to save her. He asks his daughter not to do anything foolish and to believe in the best. Hebe arrives at the waterfall and cannot believe her eyes her beloved Hercules comes out of the water to her. The pair spend the night in the woods and the girl asks her lover to run away so they can finally be happy somewhere far away. But Hercules refuses he promises her that they will be together in their own country as soon as he ends Amphitryon's reign. The tyrant king meets the Egyptian general and accuses him of a mistake, to which the guy promises to make things right and end Hercules once and for all. Soteris finally returns home to his wife, but there he finds her body and an entire detachment of Iphicles and Egyptian warriors. The boy wants revenge, but Iphicles takes his son hostage and Soteris has to betray his friend to keep the boy alive. An army breaks into Hera's house. Iphicles holds Soteris and Heap hostage, so Heracles can do nothing against his enemies. His men are executed, and the lad himself is sent to the square to publicly show his weakness and destroy the people's hope of deliverance. Amphitryon calls the lad an imposter and tells the people that he has brought them only punishment and pain. In front of Hercules, Iphicles destroys the old man Chiron and prepares to kill Soteris. But at that moment, the lad raises his eyes to heaven and turns to his real father, begging him to give him strength. Easily ripping off the stones with his chains, Hercules breaks the guards and frees himself. He falls to his knees beside Chiron, but Soteris asks his friend to leave, lest he meet the army again. The villagers take the hero's side they are willing to follow him and, if necessary, take their lives in the name of liberation. Hercules speaks before his people. He tells them that a difficult battle awaits them, but it is the only way they can recover what has been taken from them. Hercules' army approaches the palace walls just as Ephicles is about to marry He. But this time the girl boldly declares that he loves another, and even if Hercules dies, she will continue to love him. A battle begins at the palace gates, but most of the guards move to Hercules' side, and the army approaches the porch of the main castle to summon Amphitryon. The king has prepared a trap for his unborn son. His army is surrounded by a ring of fire and a detachment of Egyptian guards. Heracles challenges Amphitryon to a fair one-on-one -on -one fight, but the king realizes he cannot win this time, and he refuses to change his plan. Clouds gather over Hercules' head, and his sword receives his father's incredible power. 
He destroys his enemies, but Amphitryon leaves to hide from danger. Hercules doesn't let that stop him. He enters his old home ready to avenge the tyrant for his mother's death, while promising not to fight like a mere mortal. Amphitryon turns out to be a strong opponent, and it is not easy for Hercules, but finally he takes power in his hands and prepares to kill the tyrant. At this moment, Iphicles enters the room, holding a knife to Hebe's neck. The girl asks Heracles not to risk her life, but realizing that he will not, she stabs the blade into her own chest. The pain fills Hercules with strength. He defeats Amphitryon and leaves in him the knife with which Alchemy was killed. Hercules manages to embrace Hebe, promising her that they will never part again. A few months later, Hebe and Heracles' son is born. The happy father returns to life, beginning his reign in Greece, each time raising his eyes to the sky to thank his father.